Hi everybody, I just wanted to tell you all about my little Rubenoid, which I'm going to uh, have an upcoming video for a uh, do-it-yourself. Now I'm running it as a tweeter. It's crossed over at two and a half kilohertz. Um, it at this point the one in the clip was uh, partially finished it needs some tweaks because uh, with the Rubenoid to make it sound good there are some issues uh, for example there's the issues of the acoustic short circuits which can be solved by putting wings around it um, it sounds better than my dome tweeters I was using uh, these things sound a whole lot better easily. Also, I tried uh, replacing them with some inexpensive planers that uh, planar magnetic tweeters that were from uh, China, which uh, I like the sound of good planar magnetic tweeters. Apparently, I don't care for the sound of poor magnetic planar tweeters uh, because these did not sound good. I had some uh, high quality ones at one point, but they burned out due to unfortunate accident. Um, so at the end of this, I'll put some frequency response graphs for the frequency response it has right now. Um, it has a potential to sound really good because it has a lot more surface area than a small dome tweeter or the like. So um, I plan on using these for high quality sound. Uh, the current one is paper. That was the demonstration at the beginning. The little sound clip was um, some royalty-free music. Unfortunately, I don't have anything that would that recreates that's royalty-free that recreates a sound that would tell somebody how it really sounds on music on some actual strings, stuff that's not electronically generated, some cymbals, some top hats, you know. Um, but these do a pretty good job and they have the advantage uh, due to their dipolar action. Uh, they have a good wide sound stage and uh, this, they sound very airy. So they make it sound more natural than if you're listening to us uh, just a regular um, standard tweeter of some sort um, you know I haven't had an electric static tweeter to listen to and I might try making one of those at some point but at this point uh, the real advantage to this is the ease of construction how easy it is to make and how good your results will be this is better than you know, a toy project, you can get some really good sound out of this thing. And I'm starting to. I'm afraid the sound clip didn't do it justice. And I don't have anything that I can legally use on a YouTube clip that might do justice to the top end of it. But they sound good if you do them right. If you don't do anything, no wings in anything, they, um, they sound interesting, but they're kind of thin and brittle sounding. Um... But that's because the acoustic short circuit, not only between the, the front and the back surfaces, uh, but the front and back of the front surface and the front and back of the rear surface. Uh, if you look at how to, the, the thing is made, that'll, that'll come into play. So I'll show you how it's performing now, and I'll go ahead and do some work on it and do some updates and stuff. But... Uh, I'm going to be starting a new one like right away so I can use one for the other channel. So I'm going to start showing you how to make that. Basically all that's required is some threaded rods, some nuts, uh, some thin plywood, which we buy, which I buy from Walmart, some neodymium magnets, which are from Amazon and a small spool of uh, copper wire and then some type of plastic or paper for your uh, diaphragm. And that's about it. And it's the 
least expensive way I know of to make a potentially really good sounding tweeter. Um, and these will work for lower frequencies. There are some things that need to be worked out technically to get them to work well for lower frequencies. But the first one I made to my shock, and it was the same size as this one, it played all the way down to 80 hertz. But like I say, there were some problems because the excursion at that frequency was so large that it threw the voice coil out of the magnet. So uh, some situations would have to be adjusted with that. At this point, this is a 4 ohm. And I'll go ahead and paste the graphs at the end of this. So if you want to make one, the do-it-yourself video is coming up. Thank you.